YouTube, welcome back to my channel. And this time we're going to be talking about infectious diseases in the department of HIV. So HIV is a part of infectious diseases, just a different branch of infectious diseases. And this is just a pure pharmacology video, right? And this is why you come to the channel to understand drug pharmacology. And in this video, we're going to be talking specifically about the HIV life cycle and what drugs target which stage in the HIV life cycle. I'm not going to mention every single HIV life cycle. I'm not going to mention every single drug. I am going to mention the most important stages in the HIV life cycle, and I am going to mention the most drugs that you see in clinical practice when you're a practicing physician who wants to specialize in HIV or to people who just wants to understand. These are the drugs that you will see the most in practice. So without further ado, let's hop straight into this pharmacology video. So first of all, let's talk about what is HIV, right? HIV is simply a human immunodeficiency virus. Um, it's a sort of a immunocompromised state that you are in because of your CD4 cells are very low. Your immune cells are very low. So the objective of HIV is simply to kill us by targeting specifically our CD4 cells and they want to increase the viral load in our bodies, which is the viral copies that the HIV virus produce. And for us, this is very, very bad, simply put. And for our HIV positive population, there is no cure currently. Um, so again, I'm not going to be talking about um, stage one because it's just irrelevant. We do have drugs that block stage one, the attachment phase, the entry phase. Um, but these are not the most drugs that you see on the market. So I'm just not going to be talking about stage one. However, I am going to take you guys through a typical life cycle and bear with me. I know that this is a horrible drawing that I made, but I don't have no fancy animation. This is just bare bones. So this is a HIV um, cell that infects our CD4 cells. So let's go through the life cycle. Step one, obviously the HIV virus has to incorporate itself into the host CD4 cell. So step two, this is where the magic happens for the HIV virus. Step two utilizes three key enzymes. I want you guys to remember. Reverse transcriptase, integrase, protease. These are the three enzymes that I want you guys to remember. The first enzyme that it utilizes is reverse transcriptase. So what is transcription? Simply put in the host in humans, our DNA processes is transcription. They want to turn DNA into RNA in humans. That's simply put transcription. And the HIV virus only has RNA. So they want to turn RNA into DNA. And they can achieve that by a process in an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, right? So once the HIV enters the CD4 cell, right, there is a single stranded RNA virus that they possess, a single stranded RNA virus here and then it utilizes the reverse transcriptase enzyme, which is denoted in peach. It then binds to this receptor. It comes out on the other side as a double-stranded DNA virus now. This is a double-stranded DNA virus. And this is the whole objective of an HIV virus, to turn single-stranded RNA into double-stranded DNA by the reverse transcriptase enzyme. Once that is complete, it then moves over to stage three. So once the double-stranded DNA virus is achieved, it then utilizes an enzyme called integrase, right? And integrase is simply an enzyme to help integrate it into the host nucleus, right? You can see why I call integrase, right? This enzyme helps the HIV virus integrate itself into the host nucleus. And at this point, this is where the HIV virus becomes uncurable, right? Once something enters the nucleus of our cells, it then becomes uncurable. It has entered our nucleus and affected our actual DNA sequence. So once inside our DNA sequence, you can see that this is a simple DNA, our host normal DNA, um, but integrase actually cuts this DNA and implement this double-stranded DNA and implement itself right in the middle. In the, right in the middle of the sequence. So now the virus has penetrated our nucleus, has made itself insert our own DNA genetic makeup, and this sort of mimics our own natural DNA that we own produce. So when our body produces our own DNA copies, it's actually producing viral DNA copies. It looks identical to our own DNA sequence. After the nucleus part, 
it then comes out of the nucleus and then HIV utilizes another enzyme called protease. Protease responsibility is to cut the enzyme um, to smaller functional pieces. The reason for protease enzyme is to get the virus to a mature state. So protease enzyme utilizes the newly formed proviral RNA. They cut at specific sites to make the enzyme more smaller and functional. Therefore, it can make more proteins, it can make more fusion particles to create a very mature virus. So that's the point of protease. HIV virus will then combine with several other proteins and mechanics to form an immature virus right before it leaves the cell. So this stage is called the budding stage. The budding stage, right? At this point, the HIV is forming together like a transformer, just forming together particles to form a mature virus. And after the HIV virus has everything that it needs, it's going to exit the cell and then it's going to enter the host plasma where it can affect other healthy CD4 cells. And this is ultimately bad for us because it looks identical to our HIV immune system and it's going to thereby invade other neighboring cells. And it's just, it's terrible. So this is in essence how the HIV life cycle works, right? Step one, you have the entry phase. Step two, it utilizes the enzyme reverse transcriptase to turn single-stranded RNA into double-stranded DNA. It then utilizes and integrates enzyme to integrate itself into the host nucleus to clip it and then integrate itself into our DNA sequence. And then once that happens, it utilizes protease enzyme to cut bigger pieces to chop them up into very specific functional smaller units therefore it can cause the virus to mature right and then after it it's budding time right this is where the hiv has formed other particles to form a mature virus uh, before it exits the cell cytoplasm and then it can fully mature out of the cell out of the cytoplasm and ready to infect another CD4 cell and drop our CD4 cell. So this is the HIV virus life cycle in a nutshell. And so we have drugs to target every single stage. So let's focus on right now stage two. So we have our NRTIs and then we have our NNRTIs. So we have our nukes and our non-nukes. Let's start with NRTIs. Our NRTIs is simply nucleoside nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors and what this means is when hiv virus when they want to replicate they are grabbing nucleosides or like building blocks so it can you know grab this and connect it grab this connect it grab this connect it until it forms what it needs this is what a nucleoside is so what we have drugs for our nucleoside they sort of mimic they sort of mimic the building blocks that the HIV virus uses, right? And to put it in perspective, as I said before, this is a complete double-stranded DNA. When we give drugs to block this sequence, we are actually mimicking or tricking the virus to grabbing onto a fake nucleoside, nucleotide, in order to block this entire sequence. So you can imagine that if the HIV virus grabs this fake nucleotide, this drug completely stops and blocks this the rest of this sequence from even from happening so there's no more um, building blocks to grab from the virus right so this whole entire dna sequence is terminated um, and this is achieved with our nrti's now our nnrti's our non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors they actually interfere with the actual binding site of reverse transcriptase so therefore, it completely alters this and inhibits this trans, this uh, transaction, right? It completely blocks or alters this in some form or way where the HIV virus cannot even utilize reverse transcriptase. And so with these two together in unison, in tandem together, they achieve good viral suppression uh, and prophylactic patients, right? And in treatment combined with the integrase inhibitor. So this is why we use two drugs um, for the reverse transcriptase inhibitor. They work so good. One blocks the actual binding site and the other blocks the actual sequence termination of it, right? So this is why we use our NRTIs and our NNRTIs. In our NRTIs, 
we have drugs like emtricitabine, okay? Emtricitabine, our three-letter code for emtricitabine is FTC. FTC is the three-letter code for emtricitabine. Don't ask me why, I literally don't know. For lamivudine, our three-letter code is 3TC. 3TC. And so if you hear lamivudine, 3TC, emtricitabine, FTC, and this is the most important one. We have tenofovir or tenofovir, however you want to pronounce it. Tenofovir has two distinct formulations. You have TDF and TAF. So TDF is tenofovir disoproxyl, and then TAF is tenofovir alafenamide. One is just more tolerated better than the other. That's it. It just two salt forms, two different salt forms, but one has certain side effects, the other one don't. And uh, that's pretty much it. But both of them are still classified as NRTIs. As far as our non-nukes, our non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, the one I currently see most in practice is repilverine and duavirine. But there are more drugs, I'm telling you guys, there are a several, several drugs that I'm simply just not going to name because it's just too many, but these are the ones you will see in practice. And how you can remember the non-nukes in NRTIs, they have virine at the end. Virine, okay? Virine. So, pivirine, derivirine, um, usually these are your non-nukes um, that are combined or used along in treatment. And Moving on to the third step, integrase. We have drugs that block the integration of, of the enzyme into the host nucleus, right? So we have drugs that end in Tegravir. You guys know all what I'm talking about. For example, Bic Tegravir. Dolu Tegravir. Ral Tegravir. And one that just recently came FDA approved a couple years ago, Cabo Tegravir. And these drugs are easily remembered simply because the suffix of these drugs always end in Tegravir. Tegravir, Tegravir, Tegravir. So if you see Tegravir in the name of these drugs, then you know for a fact that it is a integrated strand inhibitor. And Bictegravir, for example, is co-formulated with Bictarvi. So Bictegravir makes Bictarvi. Bictegravir, along with two other drugs, makes Bictarvi. So moving on to your fourth step, we do have drugs to block the fourth step. So we do have drugs to block the clipping of the HIV virus because we don't want this virus to mature. So we have drugs to block this, and these are our protease inhibitors. And they're easy to you know, recognize because most of them in, if not all of them in it, Navir. Navir. So these are your protease enzyme inhibitors, Navir. We have Ritonavir, Duronavir, right? And then Ritonavir is actually co-formulated with a very popular drug that got FDA approved shortly after COVID during the pandemic. And can anyone guess the name of the drug? Paxlovid, okay? Paxlovid is the actual brand name of Ritonavir co-formulated with Nermatrelvir. So Nerma Trelvir. So Nermatrelvir plus Ritonavir equals Paxlovid. Nermatrelvir is the active ingredient to fight the virus. Ritonavir is just simply to prevent the metabolism, prevent the breakdown of Nermatrelvir so that it can increase its concentration to fight the virus. It acts sort of like a beta-lactamase inhibitor when we're talking about antibiotics. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look at this video on my antibiotic video on beta-lactamase inhibitors, and that'll be all clear for you. But these are your simple um, drug classes that you will see the most in clinical practice when we're talking about HIV medicine. There is so many different drugs out there in HIV, so many different combinations you can make out of these drug classes. I guarantee you, if you understand this, you understand HIV. Of course, there are going to be some resistant strains. Of course, there are going to be some drugs for those resistant strains, but 
clinically, most people living with HIV, these are the drugs that you will see the most. These are the most drugs on the market um, in these specific classes. It's just so many in this video, and it's not the purpose of the video. I just wanted you guys to understand the HIV life cycle and understand where drugs work in this video. But I tried my best. I don't have a fancy animation, but if you guys have any questions about this HIV life cycle and where drugs work, please don't hesitate to hit me up in the comments and watch my other videos on infectious diseases uh, and then just get educated on pharmacology, y'all. And that's all I have for you today. I'll let you go.